Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. Uh, in this video we will look at uh, database checkpoints. So, and I'm going to use a blank script and uh, not do any recording, directly add a database checkpoint and run it. So the script will directly connect to the database and, you know, do uh, the kind of checks uh, it is supposed to do based on the SQL statements that we add. So before I start uh, adding the database checkpoint, let me assure you the database environment that I have. So what I have is SQL Server 2012 Express Edition uh, installed on my local machine. And uh, you can see it's a SQL Express, it's 2012. Um, then I have sample databases. I'm gonna work with AdventureWorks LT 2012. And uh, I have a SQL statement here and all I'm doing here is uh, I am counting uh, the records from customer table uh, where the last name starts with a VE and I have eight and if I do you know all the names that start with V I have 34 so let's keep it this way uh, 34 and so we'll use this script and the uh, database server itself is the computer name slash SQL Express. That would be your database server. And uh, the database name would be AdventureWorks, uh, you know, LT 2012. So we only use these three uh, pieces of information to connect to the database and run the script. So let's go back to UFT and uh, do a design checkpoint database checkpoint and I'm going to do um, pick the secondary button specify SQL statement manually click next uh, for the connection string I can do create and pick the one I already created but let me show you the, the whole process uh, I'll do new and pick SQL SQL server from here Click Advanced, and here I need to, uh, you know, give the server name and the database name. As you can see, the syntax is server equal to the server and database equal to my database. So it is server equal to. I need. Uh, let me go back to the Management Studio. I need the server name, and that's the name. This is nothing but what you have here so primarily I just need the name the system name uh, a slash and the SQL instance when you install SQL Express Edition that this would be the default uh, instance name but if you have a SQL Server Standard Edition or Enterprise Edition uh, you know and if it is a standard instance meaning if it is not a named instance then it should be it will be something like that there would be no such thing called slash and something um, but in your test environment you know on your machine you can when you install SQL Express Edition then you'll end up with this but you know in your in real time you know you know you can ask your um, IT administrator or or maintains your test gear they can give you this piece of information maybe it could be something like uh, some system name slash you know QA database something like that and then we need the database to you know for it to work with and the database name is um, uh, AdventureWorks LT 2012 I'll just go ahead and copy from here I'll try to copy text as much as possible so you know if there are any typos you know I can just pretty much get rid of all that because I'm just copying and pasting uh, I'll do okay here it's done 
do next and it says you know I can uh, you know, save whatever I you know the database name the uh, the, the server name all that can be saved uh, and I'll just say new to that's a you know DSN name so that's a period that, that's information the, it's saving the it's a uh, Data source. That's where it's saying .dsn. That's a file name. If you open that in a Notepad, all you will see is are this, you know, the the driver uh, and then you know the server and the database name. So this information will be in the file. Click Finish and um, create a new database source. Oh, I think I stepped on. I don't need to do all that. Select a database source. I need to go back to D SQL sample data. Oops, I'm not sure where I saved it. Let me cancel all that. I'll start from scratch again. Okay, on the screen, click uh, create and we'll do new and we'll do. Uh, SQL Server. I'm sorry, let me do advanced. Then do server equal to database equal to that's the database name and the server name. Let me get it from the management studio. That's a server I want to work with. So that's the name I want to cop copying this one. Put it in there, do OK. Next, type the name of the file. So, you want to save this connection to, I want to save it to this location. Give it say, to save. So, the name is there, the whole file. Click next, finish. So, I have it. I'll select the one that we just created, which is new to, do OK. Now, so now we have, you know, it read the contents of that file and, you know, it, uh, you know, it pasted it here. I mean, you could directly key this as well. Driver equal to SQL space server, semicolon, server equal to the server name, semicolon. And then, you know, let me you know, copy all, copy all that. Like, and let me put that. You know here and you can see let me do this so it's easy to understand so this is the content of that particular DS, uh, DNS file and uh, I mean to say not DNS file but a DSN file that's the content you see that's a driver server uh, that's a UID, um, and then that's a trusted connection equal to Y says that use Windows authentication, and then UTF base, uh, that's a system name, and then that's a database name. So nothing more than that. So, so that's what is here. Then we need to give an SQL statement to work with. Let me go back to SQL Studio and copy the SQL statement. Let me go ahead and run it. 34. So we have 34 records in customer table. Let's start. The last name starts with we. So let me paste that SQL statement there and do finish. And now you know it says that 34. And if I do OK, then you know this is the way this works. Is uh, again you know you need to parameterize if you want to. Let me go ahead and run this script real quick because it has a constant value of 34. So it looks like it went through just fine. And, uh, you know, it was successful. Let us make well change for non number one we will parameterize this thing go into the cell click this button here so a constant value we'll use a parameter and give it a name it's uh, we're working with table customers underscore 
last name underscore v underscore com and just giving some description count do okay okay there so that's the value so let's let us go ahead and run one more time just to make sure that the parameterization that we just did you know is okay with the whole thing so if this goes well then we'll tweak the database in the back end and we'll force this uh, script to fail and then we can look at the results and review so so no issues there passed and it's just fine let me close the results and we know that this works and uh, it is expecting 34 when it goes to the database and does a query let us go to um, the database and uh, here as you know when we run the script you know we have 34 records that has a last name starting with we so let's go to the data and that's the last name let us uh, put a V right in front of it and two records the last name so now if we uh, I don't need to do that if you go here and run this script we have 36 and now that means here we have 34 but we have 36 that means some change happened to the database somehow so if we run this script you know technically it should fail right well let's see if it fails or not because now the data sheet the global data sheet says that there should be 34 records but there are 36 records so it should fail okay that's a good sign uh, it failed let's let's take a look at the reason so it's little cross mark and it says it failed and uh, you know 34 34 but it failed uh, but there's nothing there so what you need to do is double click on this then you get this window this says expected value is 34 but the actual value is 36 because um, we manually made a change so we we increased the number of uh, record count for the uh, for the last name starting with V so there's a you know it had a value of 34 but it found the value of 36 there's a difference so it failed so that's how you you check it now when it comes to real time um, again as I said you know as I always say it all depends um, and now that you know that you can get information from the database and you can compare it so you can you know if you have access to the database in in the field and you can you know let's say the uh, one classic example that a lot of people do at least to begin with before doing any kind of business logic is that there would always be a table at least one or two tables you know that uh, that houses all the environment configurations you know say for example if it's banking it will be like name of the bank address location and you know, all you know ABA routing number and all that and he, this is a good example where you could add a database checkpoints where uh, there would be one script which will which will verify all the configurations in the database when I say configurations in the database those are application configurations so for a banking website the bank name address branches their addresses all that is in the database so you can verify all that using database checkpoints but you know to, in order for you to do that few things number one you need to have access to your database number two you need uh, know the schema you need to know the you know the uh, you know the, the schema when I say schema I mean the table structure and columns and all that and next thing you also need to know how to write queries so if you can do if you can write queries have access and know a little bit of this about the banking schema that the, or any database that you're working with in in, on, in the field then you can definitely you know uh, add database checkpoints to your script well that's it about database checkpoints and i will see you in the next video